Good morning, everybody. Um, today's celebration is the culmination of a decade of campaigning work by organizations like HSI, Lush, and the other wonderful organizations and companies that are represented here today. Lush, uh, so with Canada now being the 44th country to ban animal testing, which is an amazing, amazing thing, and we're so happy. Lush has been cruelty free since day one. And we've always been really proud to be one of a small group of companies that have proved over time that animal testing is not necessary. Uh, but now, the Canadian public can shop in a much broader range of, of places and have peace of mind. So I'd like to thank the Canadian government for following through on the commitments that they made and to welcome the minister today to the Lush factory. And I want to welcome all of you and just say we're so excited and so pleased that the Canadian government have done this. Thank you. Thank you so much, Hillary. And you know, your passion is really, really evident, not just before when we were chatting, but in your words today. So thank you so much for your lifelong commitment to this, this very, very important cause. Hello, everyone. Good morning, and thank you for being here today. I'd like to start that, uh, you know, just mentioning that this is, uh, this is Indigenous Peoples Month. June is an important month to acknowledge and recognize uh, that we are standing today on the traditional and unceded territory of several indigenous nations, including the Mississaugas of the New Credit. And it's not just important in June that we do that and we take efforts to, uh, to take steps on the, the, the path of truth and reconciliation with indigenous peoples in this country, uh, but it's especially important today. My name is Adam Vancouverden. I'm the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Health and the Parliamentary Secretary to the Minister of Sport. And I'm really excited to be here today because I've met so many people who are so extraordinarily passionate about this issue today. This represents a major step forward in reducing our reliance on animal testing, and I would say eliminating our reliance on animal testing in support of animal welfare. I'd like to extend a huge thanks to Lush for hosting us today, and I have to say this is the best smelling announcement I have ever been to. It's my honor to introduce you to, uh, today to the Honorable Jean-Yves Duclos, the Minister of Health the Minister of Health, Jean-Yves, is a, a really, really exciting guy to work for. His staff will tell you that, and as his parliamentary secretary, I can reaffirm the same. Minister Duclos is a well-published author. He's a conference speaker. He's an, economics, an, 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 econ an economics expert and an economist. Uh, he has a long and distinguished career as an academic. And before entering politics, he was the director of the Department of Economics and a tenured professor at the Université Laval. Minister Duclos has also served with several well-known policy research organizations and has been recognized with numerous prestigious grants. And in 2014, he was elected a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, the highest accolade bestowed upon Canadian researchers. Following his election in 2015, Minister Duclos was appointed the Minister of Families, Children and Social Development, and later assumed the role of the President of the Treasury Board. In the midst of the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic, Minister Duclos took on a new set of challenges as Canada's Minister of Health. Ladies and gentlemen, please join me in welcoming to the stage my friend and colleague, Minister Jean-Yves Duclos. Bonjour à tous et à toutes, uh, and thank you, Adam, my friend and my colleague, for your kind introduction and your presence. Uh, as you can tell, uh, Adam is a much, much more than Parliamentary Secretary to Health, is also Parliamentary Secretary to Sports, and is a champion of many, many causes, including the importance of healthy living and physical activity. I also want to acknowledge the presence of our parliamentary colleagues, Leah Taylor-Roy and Richie Valdez, who represent the voices of beautiful constituents, constituencies in Ottawa. Thank you also to Hilary Jones, Chief Ethics Officer at Lush Cosmetics North America for hosting us. As a Canadian manufacturer, Lush has been a leader in the fight against animal, animal testing in the cosmetic industry in Canada since their inception. 
Hmm. Sorry. Finally, uh, thank you to all of the other. Uh, well, sorry. I normally I get my notes right, but I think I was a bit confused. Okay. Well. Yeah. Thank you. Back to my uh, initial notes. Uh, I also thank. I also want to thank Rebecca Aldworth, Michael Bernard, and everyone at the Humane Society International Canada. We know that HSI is a leading force for the protection of animals and wildlife, both in Canada and internationally. You have advocated and campaigned for a decade to get to this state. Additionally, I want to thank Darren Prasnick, the President and CEO of Cosmetics Alliance Canada. Mr. Prasnick has collaborated closely with both industry professionals and advocates for animal protection to advance a ban on animal testing in the cosmetic sector in Canada. I also want to thank Hilary Lloyd from Body Shop and Monica Engel Brexton from Cruelty Free International. Finally, thank you to all of the other animal protection advocates who can't join us today. We greatly appreciate your presence and contribution, contribution making this announcement possible. I thank you all for your efforts and engagement in favor of protecting animals. Rarely, rarely do we see policy changes where everyone is on board, where activists, industry, politicians, and Canadians all agree. Today is one of those rare days, and it is worth celebrating. Like many of us here today, Canadians are also concerned about the well-being of animals. In fact, about 90% of Canadians support the prohibition of animal testing for cosmetics. Les essais de cosmétiques sur les animaux ont beaucoup diminué au cours des dernières années partout dans le monde et nous suivons maintenant l'exemple de 41, 43 autres pays qui ont déjà pris des mesures afin d'interdire l'expérimentation sur les animaux pour les cosmétiques. Aujourd'hui, le Canada est fier de se joindre à eux. Today, Canada joins 43 other countries who have taken measures to ban cosmetic animal testing. Indeed, our government has now passed legislation banning the testing of cosmetic products on animals in Canada. With the passing of Bill C-47 late last week, the Food and Drugs Act has been amended to ban cosmetic animal testing. This means that it is now prohibited to test cosmetics on animals in Canada. Companies will no longer be able to sell cosmetics that rely on animal testing data to establish product safety, and it is now prohibited to create false or misleading statements concerning the testing of, of cosmetics on animals. Today's announcement shows that we have reached a point where we can fulfill safety requirements for cosmetics without resorting to animal testing and without compromising the health and safety of Canadians. That will also increase the confidence of Canadians in the use of cosmetics and facilitate trade with countries with similar measures. Avec l'adoption du projet de loi C47 la semaine dernière, il est maintenant interdit de mener des essais de produits cosmétiques sur des animaux partout au pays. De plus, les entreprises ne pourront plus vendre des cosmétiques dont la sécurité est établie à partir de données issues de l'expérimentation animale et il est maintenant interdit de créer des étiquettes fausses ou trompeuses concernant les essais de cosmétiques sur les animaux. L'annonce d'aujourd'hui démontre également que nous sommes arrivés au Canada à un stade où nous pouvons satisfaire aux exigences de sécurité des cosmétiques sans recourir aux tests sur les animaux et sans compromettre la santé et la sécurité des Canadiens. Les autres méthodes d'essai utilisées dans l'industrie des cosmétiques sont fiables, rigoureuses et conformes aux normes de sécurité et de sûreté les plus solides. Le gouvernement du Canada prend aussi des mesures tangibles pour réduire la dépendance à l'expérimentation sur les animaux afin que les décisions qui ont une incidence sur la santé des Canadiennes et des Canadiens s'appuient toujours sur les meilleures connaissances scientifiques. À titre d'exemple, les modifications apportées dernièrement à la loi canadienne sur la protection de l'environnement qui ont reçu la sanction royale encourageront l'abandon graduel de l'expérimentation sur les animaux. Les scientifiques de Santé Canada travaillent aussi activement pour faire progresser d'autres méthodes d'essai qui, nous l'espérons, deviendront à l'avenir la norme. In conclusion, let me express the most important message. 
which is our gratitude to animal advocacy groups and the cosmetics industry, which have been actively championing this cause for over a decade. And it is through your collective efforts and commitment and patience that we have reached this milestone. This is a prime example of the power of collaboration in leadership and shared values in driving positive change in this country. Compassion and progress can and will coexist. I thank you all for your commitment to this important issue and congratulate all for this important success. Merci. Thank you. Merci, Monsieur le Ministre. Um, you know, I was reflecting a little bit when the Minister was talking about the passage of that bill last week, which is Bill C-47, and I looked over at Leah and Richie and uh, was thinking about the wee hours of the night. And I'm not, I'm a politician, I'm not asking for like sympathy that we had to stay in the House until 1 a.m. a couple of nights ago to pass those bills. A lot of bills seem like, well, that's obvious, you should have done that like years ago. Um, it wouldn't happen without really great advocates and people that meet with their members of parliament and that raise important issues. And I just want to thank so many people in this room who have been doing that consistently for decades because it does take a lot of advocacy in order to get those bills passed. You can count on us to stay in the House of Commons until 2 a.m. when necessary to get these important bills passed, but Bill C-5, the Canadian Environmental Protection Act revision, and Bill C-47, which includes provisions to ban animal testing, like, these are important pieces of legislation that wouldn't have happened without your advocacy. So thank you, and please give yourselves a round of applause. It's next uh, my pleasure to continue introducing some of these important advocates. And next up is Rebecca Aldworth. Rebecca is the executive director of the Humane Society International here in Canada, and she's worked closely with government for, for very many decades to advance policies in Canada to improve animal welfare. So Rebecca, please come on up and uh, provide your remarks. Thank you very much. Wow, that's a tough act to follow. So um, I'll just put you here. Um, for more than a decade, Humane Society International has been at the forefront of a global campaign to end cosmetic animal testing and trade. In that time, we've achieved dozens of bans, and we've invested in more than 50 new testing methods that don't rely on animals to establish the safety of cosmetics ingredients. Here in Canada, we have worked for a decade with multiple political parties within multiple administrations to advance this critical legislation. And I think it's, uh, it's because of that time and commitment that we put in that we are so grateful to Minister Duclos and to the entire Canadian government for making this the administration to achieve this historic victory. At this time, I just want to recognize Animal Alliance of Canada and its director, Liz White, Liz has worked since the 1980s on this issue, since the first private member's bill was introduced in this country. Um, so this victory is truly decades in the making, and it's a watershed moment for animals, for everyone who works to protect them, and for all of Canada. It's also proof of just what can be achieved when the nonprofit sector, industry, scientists, government, and the public all come together to realize a vision of a better future. Moving forward, we intend to continue that collaboration to help the Canadian government to invest in the innovations that will provide better testing methods that are more effective, safer for people, and don't use animals. But right now, I'm just really grateful to be able to say at last, Canadians can rest assured that the beauty products they buy in this country are cruelty-free. Thank you so much. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank you, Rebecca and Liz. You know, I can just tell, like, sometimes these announcements are... Uh, they can be a little bit bland, like we're announcing some kind of like, you know, provision or regulation change. It's not true today. This is a, a work of passion and compassion. Uh, when I mentioned uh, in the green room to Liz that we were working uh, collaboratively on a bill to ban the export of live horses from Canada, 
you could see the emotion in her eyes. This is, this is not just a work, this is, this is passion. So thank you for your lifelong advocacy. Next up is Darren Prasnick. Darren is the president of Cosmetics Alliance, uh, the trade industry association for cosmetics and personal care products in Canada. There are over 170 member companies and uh, Darren has promised that he's coming to Milton later this week. So we're gonna meet uh, at, a, at a local cosmetics company perhaps in Milton, but uh, before you come to Milton, you have to come to the mic. Over to you, Darren. Thank you, Kurt. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Monsieur le Ministre, members of parliament, our hosts, uh, guests. Today is a wonderful day and I think you, you feel the passion of those of us who have been working on this now for years, often remotely, uh, and coming together. And I think what's really remarkable, and the Minister alluded to this, this is one of those rare opportunities that you have a major piece of legislation come forward that has, I would say, near, almost absolutely unanimous support both across the parties in the House of Commons, with industry, animal advocacies, and the scientific community. And that didn't happen by accident. That took a lot of work. And I look at my colleagues today from Cruelty Free, The Body Shop, Lush, HSI, Animal Alliance, those of us in industry. It took a lot of work coming together to figure out how, mostly over technical issues, but how we could advance in a common way a piece of legislation. And Mr. Minister, I want to thank your staff at Health Canada because once we had a kind of consensus on principles, we worked with your legislative team on developing uh, a package that you could take forward and ultimately became the bill. And what was amazing is when we finally saw the wording come out, there wasn't one objection, one concern. It met every one of the uh, concerns or issues that we had. So it was a remarkable, remarkable experience. I would be remiss today if I just didn't put some of this in perspective. There's one group of people we haven't thanked, and that's the people of the European Union. Because some two decades ago, they brought in the first animal testing legislation, as you know. But they also invested some hundred million dollars along with advocacy organizations and industry in developing animal, non-animal testing methods. And quite frankly, over the last 20 years, it has made it possible for the cosmetics industry to be able to move away from animal testing and still meet government uh, toxicology requirements. So that made it possible, and, and they really, they, were, they had foresight, and they invested in it, and they moved it forward, and that's why the rest of the world and our industry has been able to do it. Mr. Minister, I, I also want to recognize your government took a very important step this year in the modernization of the Canadian Environmental Protection Act, CEPA, in which it gave direction, included direction, that Environment Canada on environmental testing would be moving away from animal methods for toxicology. And why that's important is because today we celebrate in this industry, but there is still a lot of work to be done. And it's going to kind of take the investments that my colleagues spoke about by the government and others in developing other non-animal uh, non -animal methods, training regulators, training professionals, training scientists, to move this forward till we have the day where we do not require any animal testing methods to prove toxicology. That is absolutely critical. And the government of Canada has taken those steps. So, Mr. Minister, to you and your colleagues, thank you for moving this forward. And we look forward to the future. And I have to say to my colleagues I've been working with, this road isn't over. There's still a lot of things we need to do together. And you have our commitment to stand with you. Thank you. Thank you, Darren. I, um, I, I also want to note how this isn't just an announcement that's important for Canada and Canadians. This is important for the international market. And that's why we're seeing a sort of international reaction to this. And I spent my previous career trying to keep up to and pass Europeans in a kayak, and now it seems like we're trying to catch up to and pass Europeans in terms of legislation too. Uh, nobody likes being 44th, but if it does mean that you're next, then I think that we can acknowledge that's really good progress. And, uh, y you know, it, one, one, one aspect of, of, uh, of this announcement, when you recognize that it actually has global consequences, is when people come from really far away to acknowledge that. And uh, our, our next speaker, um, next speakers did, and, and I want to thank them. If there is a, an event later with a, 
with a centerpiece, then you can take the centerpiece home because like at a wedding, you came from the farthest, coming all the way from San Francisco uh, for this announcement today. Um, so from the body shop, we have Hilary Jones and Monica Engebretsen from Cruelty Free International. Hilary's the head of brand and activism for the body shop in North America, and Monica is the head of public affairs for North America and the CFIA uh, organization who works globally to end animal testing. So I'll ask you both to come up to the mic. Thank you very much. Hi, everybody, and thank you. Nearly 50 years ago, our founder, Anita Roddick, started the body shop with the belief that, the, that business can be conducted with love and serve as a powerful force for public good. Standing here among policymakers, activists, experts, and our industry partners, I can't think of a better example of this guiding philosophy than the years-long collaboration that's led us to this moment. We did it. Canada, we're forever against animal testing. This is a historic win for beauty lovers and animal rights activists. More importantly, it's a win for the animals who've been cruelly and unnecessarily subjected to painful experiments for the sake of products. Change like this doesn't happen overnight. Many, many, many people have worked tirelessly and thanklessly behind the scenes for years. Our thanks are in order. Thank you to Minister Duclo and the staff at Health Canada for your work bringing forth this legislation. Canada is now a world leader on this issue because of your courage and dedication. With thanks, we are proud to have led coalition discussions with Cosmetics Alliance Canada and Cruelty Free International, discussions which created the conditions for all of us to be here today. Cruelty Free International is an outstanding organization that has been in this fight with us since the very first campaign over 34 years ago. In fact, they helped the body shop become the first beauty brand to campaign against animal, against, against this cruel practice. None of this legislation or any of our anti-animal cruelty activism around the world would be possible without you. And of course, to our own team at The Body Shop, especially our Canadian retail store employees. Yeah, there they are. And change-making customers, you spent years collecting petition signatures and meeting with MPs across Canada. Because of your work, we delivered more than 925,000 signatures to the government calling for a ban on cosmetic animal testing. You've had difficult conversations with MPs and some senators, some of whom were initially skeptical of this movement, and you even led a pet march in Ottawa. Your passion, creativity, and willingness to fight for what's right are an inspiration to all of us. Finally, animal testing is not needed to make great beauty products. The alternatives are cheaper, more effective, and faster. Everyone in this room has known this to be true, but we're excited to allow beauty lovers across this great country to experience this firsthand. The fight does not stop in Canada. We will continue to work towards a worldwide ban on animal-tested animal cosmetics forever. Thanks so much. I'll just add in closing, I know you've all been here a long time, uh, just to point out again what a unifying issue this has been. It has brought together industry, advocates, government regulators, all together for a common cause. And you probably could not find an issue that brings together more voters across party lines, genders, and generations more than ending animal testing for cosmetics. Um, I'm really proud, thank you to the Minister for taking this move, and as a U.S. citizen, I can now say that Canada has surpassed the United States in taking federal action on this issue, and I hope the United States follows Canada's lead. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Thank you, Hillary. Thank you, Liz. Thank you, Hillary. Uh, thank you, everybody. Thank you, Darren. Thank you so much for coming today. Thank you to the activists. Thank you to the workers. Thank you to Lush and the Body Shop for providing uh, clueless 12-year-old boys like I was for what to get their mom for Mother's Day every year. Uh, it was an easy decision to go in there and get a little basket of, uh, of self-care products. So thank you to everybody here. You know, I, I, 
I will note that uh, not only have we surpassed the United States in, the, in this category, a couple of others too, but we work very collaboratively together and having President Biden in the House of Commons a couple of months ago was really uh, evidence of that. It was a, quite a nice moment for North America. Um, this concludes the, uh, the formal portion. Um, thank you for this incredible event. It really was very unique. I understand that some of us politicians get to make a bath bomb later, which is uh, very, very exciting. Uh, but we also have some, uh, an opportunity to go s to some questions from the media. So thank you very much for being here. Thank you very much for your activism and your lifelong dedication to ending cruelty to animals. Thank you, everybody. We will now proceed to questions from journalists in the room. Please state your name, media outlet, and whom your question is directed to. You will have the opportunity to ask one question with one follow-up. Nous allons maintenant passer aux questions des journalistes présents dans la salle. Vous voulez indiquer votre nom, votre média et le destinaire de votre question. Vous aurez la possibilité de poser une question avec un suivi. Let's proceed to the first question. Nous allons passer à la première question. Uh, good morning, sir. Bienvenue à Toronto. Uh, Simon Dingley from CBC News. Um, does this new law exempt cosmetics that are already for sale in Canada? And if this is so, it's likely to have no impact on the myriad of makeup brands that are tested on animals already on the shelves. Uh, why would you not ban it outright for all cosmetics for sale like other countries have done? Today, today's announcement is about the prohibition of additional testing on animals due to cosmetics. We want to stop that, and therefore it does three things. So it, it stops animal testing for cosmetics in Canada. It also bans the products that will be, that would be, it could be tested on animals in other countries in the future, banning the sales of those products in Canada. It also prohibits false and misleading information shared on cosmetic uh, testing on animals in the future. Now that does all sorts of great things, all of them due to the great leadership and partnership that we have heard from and on in the last few minutes. It also sends a signal to other countries which we know should also be uh, following suit. It also sends uh, signals to those countries that would like to sell products in Canada in the future that will know from now onwards that they won't be able to do that if they test those products on animals in the world. Second question, deuxième question, Monsieur le Ministre. Does the, do you know how many makeup countries are going to be impacted by this ban in Canada? Well, go to Darren. If I could, since this is my industry. Oh, sure. Yeah. Um, if I could, just on that point, none, because we haven't been doing animal testing for years. I think it's really symbolic, though, that we recognize it in law. If I could, just on your other question, which I think was, what about ingredients that have been around 20, 30 years that were tested on animals years ago? And, you know, you, those ingredients have been, most cosmetics ingredients have been around a long time. The reality is, if an ingredient's been there 10, 20 years in use, the law requires that you be able to demonstrate safety. You've got 10, 20 years of human use safety data. So that really is, uh, is your justification because they've been in market and commerce. You know, you can't go back what was done 30 years ago. But that's the practical reality for the industry. Thank you, sir. And although I'm less uh, of an expert than, uh, and therefore less credible than Darren would be, I would also add one more piece, is that Canadians want confidence in the use of cosmetics in Canada. That, that confidence that Canadians are seeking is a reason for which we have so many people and so many partners around this room. It's good for the industry. It's also good for Canadians to know that no further animal testing will be, will be conducted in Canada for cosmetics. Uh, just two questions for the lady from Lush, if we could. And ma'am, I'm sorry, we didn't get your name off the top of your speech. Could you give us your name and title, My please? My name's Hilary Jones. Hey, could you spell it for us, please? H-I-L-A-R-Y. And your title, please? I'm Ethics Director. For, for Lush. For Lush Global. Um, Ms. Jones, do you think this law goes uh, far enough? Um, yes. I mean, I've, I've, we're just... They, nothing's ever far enough for us. We're, we're extremists, so we would like to see no historic animal data used in, in testing, in, in regulatory clearance, because we don't believe it's reliable, 
We believe it's unscientific to test on animals. It's a very blunt, old-fashioned tool. So we'd like to see all cosmetics pass through new methods. Um, but it, are we happy with this legislation? Absolutely. And as you've rightly pointed out with your questions, there needs to be three parts to animal testing legislation. You need to ban the ingredients being tested, you need to ban the finished product being tested, and you need to ban the import from other countries of cosmetics that have had those two things happen. That and that idea. provides a complete package to, uh, to ensure not just that Canada is free of animal testing, but that you are forcing other countries, that manufacturers in other countries, to comply with your tight regulations. That, that was my next question. So those three steps are what the federal government mean, needs to do next? I, I believe those three steps are in there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, merci. We will pass on to the Zoom now for any further questions. Nous allons passer à Zoom maintenant pour toute autre question. Thank you. If you're a journalist on the Zoom and wish to ask a question, please use the hand raising function. Again, we ask that you limit yourself to one question and one follow up. Si vous êtes journaliste sur le Zoom et vous désirez poser une question, veuillez utiliser l'option de lever la main. Encore une fois, merci de vous limiter à une question et un suivi. Our first question comes from Catherine Levesque of the National Post. Catherine, please go ahead. Yes, hi everyone. Bonjour, Monsieur Duclos. Um, I was wondering if you could explain, so, so it's pretty clear what the announcement today is. It's on C-47, uh, the, the banning of cosmetic animal testing. Um, I was wondering if you could clarify for me, what are the changes that are passed under S-5 that was also, that also received a royal assent? Good question. So the announcement this morning is about C-47, which does uh, three things, as we uh, mentioned earlier. The first is to ban any animal testing for cosmetics in Canada. The second is to ban the sales of products that would have been tested on animals outside of Canada. And the, second, the third thing is to prohibit misleading and false information that would entice or mislead Canadians into purchasing products that would be tested, cosmetic products that would be tested on animals in the future. That is complementary to what Bill S-5 is also doing. Bill S-5 is the bill that modernizes the Canadian Environmental Protection Act. In that bill, there are now clear measures moving us forward in other ways to protect animals against cruelty in a way which uh, Darren um, uh, summarized briefly earlier. We know that there are manners to protect the health and safety of Canadians that do not require animal testing. That requires further investments in science, which Health Canada and other experts and scientists are currently proceeding with, but also stronger regulations and legislations to make sure that as we protect the health of Canadians, we also you know, protect the, uh, the, the, the rights and the well-being of animals in Canada. And as we do that, we are also not only encouraging, but in some ways forcing other countries also to take similar measures, especially if they want to export products for Canadian consumption. So this is all great. Again, it's all great because of the tremendous leadership and partnerships of so many in this room and outside of this room for so many years. And our message is again a message of gratitude. We have a lot more to do, but as we were saying just a moment ago, it's sometimes important to celebrate the progress that is being made. Okay, and uh, as a follow-up, I was wondering, you know, on the next steps, is there any openness uh, from the federal government to fund research to find, uh, you know, more alternatives to animal testing? And can we expect an announcement to that effect um, sometime soon? Two things need to be done and two things are ongoing. First is to support the, the important and essential uh, capabilities of, the, uh, of, the, of Health Canada officials and their scientists in particular. The second thing is that we need to continue supporting researchers outside of Health Canada. There are loads of, of researchers who are both able and very, very interested in monitoring other ways of um, 
of testing products for the safety of Canadians. So this is great news. We've seen during COVID-19 how much scientists can produce to the benefit uh, of society. We want to continue doing that for those particular reasons. Thank you. Our next question, our prochaine question, vient de Catherine Enfeld de La Presse, quoi? Catherine. Allô? Oui. Oui, vous m'entendez bien? Oui. <rire> désolé, désolé. Problème avec mon micro. Euh, en fait, je voulais savoir sur le marché canadien en ce moment, quelles portions de cosmétiques euh, ont été testées sur les animaux ou ont euh, des ingrédients qui ont été testés sur les animaux qui finalement ne seront pas impactés là, par, par la nouvelle loi? Il y a, euh, à la connaissance de Santé Canada, et c'était validé par euh, des experts un peu plus tôt, euh, aucun produit euh, cosmétique présentement au Canada qui sont testés sur des animaux. Ceci étant dit, on veut s'assurer que ce ne soit jamais le cas, et c'est pour ça que la loi C-47 a été euh, passée. C'est aussi parce que cette loi est maintenant en vigueur que d'autres pays, dont les États-Unis, mais aussi d'autres pays, vont probablement vouloir suivre assez rapidement l'exemple du gouvernement canadien, parce que le modèle, un modèle, c'est important. Euh, c'est certainement parce que nous sommes évidemment euh, en proche collaboration avec le gouvernement américain, mais aussi parce que les compagnies étrangères qui vont vouloir euh, vendre des produits cosmétiques au Canada ne pourront plus le faire à l'avenir si ces produits cosmétiques sont testés sur des animaux. OK. Puis qu'est-ce qu'il y en a des, des, des produits qui ont des ingrédients qui, eux, dans le passé, ont été testés? Ça représente quelle portion euh, des, des, des cosmétiques vendus sur le marché? Il faudrait euh, valider. Il est clair que euh, les tests ont déjà été faits. Alors, c'était évidemment dans un, dans un monde où le, la préoccupation pour la santé animale était moins forte. On sait qu'on va dans une direction totalement différente maintenant. On veut protéger la santé humaine, oui, mais aussi protéger, protéger la santé des animaux. Et donc, à partir de maintenant, ce ne sera plus permis. Mais les informations qui ont été accumulées au cours des dernières décennies, euh, des informations qui parfois ont été récoltées sur la base de tests animaux. Ce sont des informations déjà existantes. Elles, à, elles continueront à être utilisées. Et ce qui est important, c'est qu'il n'y aura pas d'autres informations d'accumuler au cours des prochaines années pour l'usage des cosmétiques en utilisant des tests sur des animaux. Merci beaucoup. Notre prochaine question vient de Mathieu Massé de Radio-Canada. Mathieu, à vous la parole. Bonjour, M. Duclos. Euh, ben, en fait, j'aimerais reprendre euh, votre réponse à ma collègue euh, par rapport euh, à, au financement des, des alternatives de recherche pour les animaux. Si vous pouvez répéter ça en français, ça serait très utile, s'il vous plaît. Deux choses. C'est que cette, euh, cette, cette recherche doit se faire nécessairement, et c'est très important, au sein de Santé Canada. Il y a beaucoup d'experts qui sont équipés pour faire progresser cette recherche. Et informer et guider les élus dont je fais partie pour prendre de bonnes décisions à l'avenir. Mais ce qui est tout aussi important, c'est de financer la recherche en dehors du gouvernement canadien. Il y a de plus en plus des chercheurs à l'échelle du pays qui ont non seulement les talents, mais aussi l'intérêt pour s'assurer que tout en protégeant la santé des gens, on protège la dignité et la santé des, euh, et la vie des, des animaux. Donc, c'est parti d'un environnement plus général où on sait que la santé humaine doit être protégé tout en protégeant la santé de l'environnement, y compris la santé du monde animal. Un, je sais que dans ma, dans ma circonscription à Québec, il y a de plus en plus de chercheurs à l'Université Laval et ailleurs qui sont mus par ces considérations davantage philosophiques pour mettre, euh, pour mettre en œuvre, pour, mettre, euh, à, 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 à pour rendre utiles les talents et l'expertise qu'ils ont pu accumuler au cours des années sur des enjeux aussi sensibles que la protection de la santé animale. Merci. Vous m'excuserez de changer rapidement de sujet. On travaille avec les collègues ici. En fait, le Bureau de la concurrence a dévoilé ce matin son rapport sur l'épicerie de détail, puis il conclut qu'il faut plus de concurrence dans ce secteur-là, mais que c'est difficile pour les indépendants de se tailler une place. Qu'est-ce que vous pensez de ce rapport, puis ensuite, quelles mesures pourraient être prises pour justement favoriser cette concurrence-là? C'est clair que le coût de la vie est, est, est très élevé, que le coût de l'alimentation est particulièrement élevé. On le constate facilement lorsqu'on va faire l'épicerie. 
Euh, c'est clair aussi qu'il y a beaucoup de gens qui se préoccupent euh, du, des, euh, de la concentration plus importante du pouvoir d'achat et du pouvoir de négociation des grandes entreprises alimentaires. Ça fait partie évidemment d'une responsabilité partagée, beaucoup de, de, de responsabilités au cours au, au sujet de la commercialisation euh, du pouvoir euh, économique des grandes entreprises relève de la compétence des provinces et des territoires. Mais au gouvernement canadien, on en est conscient et on va travailler avec les provinces et les territoires pour faire en sorte que ce, cette monopolisation croissante des chaînes alimentaires ne nuise pas à la qualité de vie et à la, au pouvoir d'achat des Canadiens. OK, merci beaucoup. Uh, C'est tout sur le Zoom. Uh, that'll conclude today's uh, event. Thanks for your participation. Any additional questions can be directed to Media Relations at Health Canada. L'événement est maintenant terminé. On vous remercie de votre participation. Si vous avez d'autres questions, n'hésitez pas à communiquer avec le Bureau des Relations avec les médias à Santé Canada. Merci et bonne journée. Thanks and have a nice day. Thank you. Recording merci stopped. Monde.